You are now watching Zach Lesage PTCG. Let's get it. Yo, what's poppin' YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be covering over Vinny Fernandez's winning control deck from the Chill TCG Season 3 Invitational. Yep, uh, we wouldn't have ever expected it, but Excadrill Handlock won the Chill TCG Invitational. So you might be wondering, how did that happen? Well, in a case where there's 16 players only invited to a best of 2 out of 3 double elimination bracket, um, the metagame can actually change because first and foremost, chill events are usually best of one. This event was best of three. Other times, it's just this deck was for a very small pool of players, so you can maybe target in or understand more of what that, those players are going to be playing. So for example, players like Joshua Sutherland were in that bracket and they only play Luke Metal. So maybe using that type of information, you could kind of figure out what every single player is playing. So major congrats to Vinny. The goal of this video was to show you his deck list that he was able to win the event with, explain exactly what's going through with the deck so that if you do run into an Excadrill hand lock deck or if you're under or if you're trying to like build it out or anything else like that or play it yourself, I can totally let you know exactly like why these cards are played, when to play them, etc, etc. And then some gameplay. So we'll see exactly how it goes. I'm going to hop onto some games on the ladder, see what's up there. The deck list is in the description if you want to copy and paste it while you play along with it. And if you haven't given this video a like already, give it a like to signal boost it to Pokemon TCG fans and subscribe to the channel right there. We're currently on a road to 4,000, only about about 250 away, so we can totally get there, peeps. All right, let's jump into this deck list. So starting off, you can see that there's actually quite a lot of Pokemon in this deck. Um, and not just Pokemon, there's a lot of cards in this deck, a lot of one ofs. Most decks are able to go in the thing. This one has a line to scroll down to see what else is available in the deck. It's not just one or two cards. This deck is like full four lines. So let's jump into it. Let's get it. Let's get going. Uh, we have Pidgey here. Pidgey is basically the best Pidgey to evolve into the Pidgeotto. The reason why we play this Pidgey is because it has 10 more HP. Pidgeotto here is so that you can use air mail. So the cards that you put back with Excadrill's Rototiller or just have in your deck, you can sift through your deck. The common question that's gonna be asked is, why does this deck not play Chinchino? Why does this deck play Pidgeotto? Pidgeotto doesn't discard anything, so you're allowed to con you're able to control what you want to top deck a little bit more, and that might not necessarily make sense, but if you always have to discard a card, you might not necessarily be able to decide what you want to do. So Pidgeotto allows you to always just draw at least one card Chinchino, you have to discard cards in order to make that happen. So let's say if you only need one card and you need to leave a card in your deck so you can't use Rototiller or something like that, Chinchino would take that option away instantly off the table. So as much as Pidgeotto is a weaker draw support, it is the better choice for this deck. Drillbur, this is the best one because it has Rototiller, so it, fill, it kind of fits thematically with this deck. You can shuffle a card from your discard pile into your deck, whereas evolving into Excadrill, you can use Rototiller to shuffle four cards from your discard pile into your deck. Next up, we got a copy of Jirachi. Jirachi might be the case where you want to use like Stellar Wish to guarantee something out of a larger deck. Maybe you need to get a Team Yell Grunt, or maybe you need to get like a Tool Scrapper or a Wondrous Lab, or maybe a Galar Mine. It guarantees either option. The deck does play a copy of Scoop of Net, so you can recycle that back over and over with Rototiller. Shouldn't really too be too big of a issue. There's also two copies of Bird Keeper if you need to get it out of the active spot. Luke Metal is basically for you to use Full Metal Wall and rip all of your opponent's energy. So it's really easy to capture energy to this Pokemon so that you can just grab out like a Pidgey or a Drillbur or a Zacian, power up half and then attach another energy and Full Metal Wall your opponent's Pokemon mid to late game, especially if they're under some kind of juggle with Wondrous Labyrinth that you can shut off with Galar Mine, or let's say if they're under a Yellhorn, you could definitely use it um, to its full effect. Just remember, if you are playing cards like Wondrous Lab, your attacks are gonna cost more because your Pokemon are also not fairy type. Zacian V here is basically only used for Intrepid Sword as an additional draw, draw engine at the end of the game. As long as you're not decking out or you need to use Rototiller, you're, you're basically going to be using Zacian because Zacian is going to allow you to draw extra cards. Got a copy of Giratina, similar to Jirachi, with the one scoop of net available into the deck, which kind of functions as like an extra like half switch. You can use Dimension Breach, especially if they play a bunch of special energies. So against decks that play a lot of special energies, you can just rip them to shreds. Mew is basically to protect your Pokemon from all these spreading cards, such as Rapid Strike, Urshifu, etc, etc. Weezing works 
kind of hand in hand with Jesse and James, allowing you to like rip your opponent's entire hands. Um, it works really well with other cards in the deck, such as Reset Stamp, so you could rip their hand next to nothing and then use Chip Chip Ice Axe to control the top of their deck. So you can look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck, choose one of them. If they have a zero card hand, you could always choose a card like Quick Ball or just a basic Pokemon that's not gonna draw them cards and leave them defensive with. And that's really where like the deck gets into complete control. Crushing Hammer is to take the energies away off of any threats. This can be combined with Team Yelgrunt to remove all of your opponent's energies from play. Level Ball searches out most Pokemon in this deck. So Rita's Drillbur, Pidgeotto, Pidgey. I mean, there's some other Pokemon you could grab if you need like a Jirachi or a Mew, but for the main part, it's just gonna be grabbing those Pokemon. Lily's Poke Dolls in case you need a break of some sort, whether you just need a turn to build up into an Excadrill or your opponent necessarily can't do too much. It also is an anti-deco measure, so you have a couple options there. The deck is weird by only playing one ordinary rod, or at least I thought at first, but considering you can always get things back with Rototiller, the ordinary rod is just like in the event where you don't have access to any of these Rototiller cards and you could just get it back an ordinary rod. So this deck can go as deep as just having access to a drill bird to get back an ordinary rod to get back other things, and that can kind of reset your whole deck. So this deck is able to loop itself over and over again with Rototiller getting everything it wants back. So again, Ordinary Rod is a mandatory card in this deck. Pokecom is just so that you can search at some Pokemon, such as Excadrill, and there's a few other cards that you just can't necessarily grab out, such as Weezing, um, or just grabbing any of the Pokemon necessary for the deck. Same thing with One Quick Ball. The energy, like the, the kind of ball engine where Pokemon search is gonna look weird with four copies, two copies, one copy, but the deck does play for capture energy as well. Uh, so you can search those out pretty easily from your deck or just being able to search out Pokemon easily from your deck, I should say. A uh, couple reset stamps, reset stamp your opponent low and discard their hand with Jesse and James or just reset stamp them low. Even if you don't have the Jesse James, reset stamp can certainly sting. Scoop up net is just for any Pokemon that you could scoop up nets. Again, remember it does work really well with the Jirachi and the Gyratina. Tool scrappers in case they have anything pesky that's in play that would be stopping them, maybe an air balloon. Um, you could take away their air balloons and lock them in place for the rest of the game. Yellhorn allows you to confuse your opponent's active, so at least you're turning their attacks. If they're getting them off to a coin flip, maybe it's easier to get this off and take care of their switches. Maybe it forces them into wasting switches. Then you can lock them in play with Galar Mine afterwards, increasing the retreat cost of both active Pokemon. Wondrous Lab is great at giving them an extra energy cost. You have all the time in the world if your opponent's not attacking, and you can get back your resources. Your opponent's deck likely can't. Bird Keeper's a great draw engine, especially if they keep on trying to bring up things like Zacian V or Luke Metal on the bench because they have a heavy retreat cost. You can't scoop up net those Pokemon, so Bird Keeper's a must. Boss's orders to boss up something that can't necessarily attack. You could either use Wondrous Lab or Galar Mind to kind of lock your opponent in play. Cynthia Caitlin allows you to get back your supporters in real time and being draw supporter. Jesse James to hand lock your opponent. Lieutenant Surge, you will usually fall behind on prize cards. There are some circumstances where it's faster to knock out your opponent's Pokemon with Slash than it is to deck them out. Make sure that you are not decking yourself out in the process, but go with whatever wins the game in the shortest amount of turns. Lieutenant Surge allows you to, you can play up the three supporter cards including the Surge. So Surge plus Yell Grunt plus Jesse James to discard the energy because that does put the energy back in their hands. You could use Surge, Boss, Jesse James, leaving them defenseless, zero card hand, Chip Chip Ice Axe. There's a lot of plays. And of course we have a couple fighting energy is just to be able to use the Roto Tiller in the first place. So overall, this deck has a lot of options and I know that's a lot of information. The biggest thing is just trying to find cards, playing them in the correct order. So you definitely, like, if you're playing Lieutenant Surge, Jesse James, Team Yelgrunt, you definitely want to go Yelgrunt first, so you're discarding the card off Jesse James. Or do you, actually? you got to think about it and be like, do they only have two cards in their hand? Do they have one card in their hand? What is the best way for me to determine this? So make sure that when you're playing this deck that you understand that every action has a kind of a counteraction when it comes to it, especially when it comes to discarding additional cards from your hand or losing cards out of your deck or being, putting yourself in a situation where your opponent can Marnie you so you lose the game. Um, don't run the deck too tight unless you're very comfortable with this deck. But let's see exactly what this deck can do on the ladder. 
no promises here. I'm assuming we might get some concessions. We might run into some poor matchups. This deck is strictly good in best of three. I would not recommend playing this in a best of one tournament just because the deck usually has a game where it kind of falls. Um, unless of course the matchup's super favorable. So do keep that in mind as we play some games with this deck. So we're gonna call the coin flip and we lost the coin flip. So in a case where we win the coin flip, I think it's probably better for us to go first because that allows us to get our Pokemon down and we can use Zacian and all that fun stuff. So you can see we have capture energy. We're not necessarily like losing this game on the first turn or anything because the deck has a lot of ways to search out basic Pokemon. <clears throat> so I think that that sounds quite nice. So we're playing against a Cramorant. Now I, I gotta be careful a little bit here, but more so we're gonna go capture energy. Make sure you're fully checking through the deck to make sure you know what you have left in this deck. So in this case, I know I wanna grab a Zacian, but seeing that we have Drillbur, Garatina, Jirachis, we have access to our other Excadrills, which could be really important. We do have to be careful to know if we have our fighting energies as we scroll through this deck. crushing hammers there so the fact that they're playing crammer it makes me think they're probably playing tempo's art or something like that so we just have to be careful of what they might necessarily have so let's go zation v and there's nothing else that i can do i don't want to reset stand my opponent i don't want to use scoop of net and this is a type of game where like as long as you're able to play pretty quickly i just like take take a second while you're playing your turns out to understand like no i don't want to do this no this is the correct thing to do speak out loud oh our opponent looks like they're playing cramorant v max interesting i can see that this deck has a pretty good matchup against control because they can get their energies back with the recycle energies <laughs> so we can't necessarily um get rid of them except with jesse and james but it is something to note that we can get rid of them with Jesse and James. We can get rid of their Glimwood Tangles. Our Pokemon are not worth very many prize cards. We do have Mew that we can put down on our bench. So I wouldn't be surprised if they just went Beat Catch here, which they are using Beat Catch here. So we'll see exactly how it goes. And this game might be a long game. It might be a short game. We're going to see exactly what's going on here. So there's a Lieutenant Surge, nothing crazy that we want to do. Let's go Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto, let's... I like using Pidgeotto before I use my supporter in the first place. So I'm going to go ahead and use Airmail. Crushing Hammer seems okay. I'll just put that... Just so we could discard their other energies as they come out. At this point, we're now using Cynthia Caitlin. Now, it's trying to get us something in my discard pile that might be more valuable later or something like that. Honestly, it's one of those things where we could probably catch our opponent off guard. With Weezing, I'm probably going to discard the Lieutenant Surge. We're probably going to be behind on prize cards in a few turns. We are going to get another Pidgey going down. And I don't necessarily feel comfortable discarding that energy in particular. There's nothing that I would necessarily want to free retreat into anyways. Or maybe I'll retreat into a Garatina. Garatina might be a little bit better. Um, I'm also going to use Reset Stamp. My opponent clearly just grabbed Rare Candy, um, Porygon. Maybe I could have used Crushing Hammer, put it back, and shuffled it back into the deck. But I think they probably would have gotten Energy. In this case, I don't see any reason to, it, to retreat. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and Intrepid Sword. So it's all about being very careful there, because I could have even played down the Gyratina, retreating to Gyratina, um, then played the reset stamp. But we'll have to see exactly what our opponent got off of this reset stamp. We did give them a large kind of hand. They do play the draw energy. The draw energy could actually work out well for us, especially if they deck themselves out. But as long as they don't get rare candy, I'm okay with it. So we have another turn where they likely are getting rare candy and Porygon Z or some kind of combination that allows them to get them. I mean, when you directly search your deck with B-Catch, you, you have a decent shot of getting it. Okay, so we got triple crushing hammers now. Let's see what airmail brings us first. I am gonna go ahead and go quick ball because at least I can get us a Mew. And let's evolve into the second one. Let's see what 
airmail brings us here. I'll just grab a Weezing. I don't think they really play anything that's tool scrapper vibes. We could always go for Bird Keeper to rip into something else. So it just determines like what what's that something else I want to get. I'm gonna go ahead and go Gyratina as a way to just like get out of the deck. It's gonna be the Pokemon that I'm just gonna chill up active with. Before I go like searching out a Mew, again, I'm not sure how I wanna search out the Mew. Maybe I'll just discard one of the Crushing Hammers since those are gonna be more valuable later on in the game. So I think Mew is going to be a must. So before we play down the Mew, I do wanna go Bird Keeper into this Gyratina. Giving myself some draw engine. Now, again, I have to be careful with the way that I'm playing down cards. The turn that I get down Drillbur, I probably want to get down two Drillbers or be in a secured spot. I am also going to put down a Pidgey in case they do somehow get after a Pidgeotto. So let's just go Mew goes down here. Again, nothing to really worry about. I might as well start playing Galar Mines so that they start losing their Pokemon or their Glimwood Tangles because they'll have no way to get them back as far as I'm concerned. We also have Scoop of Net if we ever need to get out of anything. <laughs> so we're going to go Intrepid Sword. Again, nothing crazy that we're drawing into. The ideal setup for any board state, obviously we're playing against a deck that can snipe the bench. So we want to have a Mew. We want to have at least double Pidgeotto. And we want to have room for double, double Drill Burr. So that's really where the Gyratina and the Pidgey are. Those are going to be our sacrifice Pokemon as we try to set up. And this deck struggles to set up some games. This is going to be no difference. They probably don't even play any ways to get out of the active spots um, beyond just retreating because they can just retreat with recycle energy. So our goal here is to go crushing, crushing, reset stamps, that kind of vibe. But the way that they could just accelerate energy certainly makes for a difficult matchup. Think about decks like X... Think about decks like Eternatus, for example, that might not necessarily have all those energies that they could power up in a single turn. And of course, they're going to get a knockout with Max Jets. It just seems very likely. The fact that they're evolving, um, I, I don't know if I think that's a good idea. They, they probably only need to do 160. We'll see if they even get the knockout. Okay, there's their knockout. Our opponent's just broken at flipping those heads. <laughs> the poor guy, Rutina, never had never knew what was going on. Okay, so we're gonna send a Pidgey. So that's kind of what we said we would be doing, just discarding their energies. Um, now, Cynthia Caitlin might be a little bit, it might be okay to play. Um, I'm gonna use the air, air mail first. I think that's worthwhile. Jesse and James certainly doesn't seem bad. Let's go air mail again. Let's go level ball. Level ball might be able to get us something else. Um, at this point, I think I am going to use Cynthia Caitlin. I think that that seems worthwhile. Discarding a Pokemon communication. I don't see too much use for the Pokemon communication. And let's just get back uh, Lieutenant Surge's strategy. I think that sounds okay. Oh, and we got another Pidgeotto, so we might as well play it. I think that that seems like a good idea. So let's go Airmail. We could... Yellhorn our opponents active Pokemon. So maybe we could slow them down a little bit that way Again, I think we're gonna need to sacrifice another Pokemon So I am gonna put Jirachi down and play um, After this Pidgeotto likely gets knocked out. So I always plan for the worst and prepare for the best. Let's go Yellhorn We're gonna make them both confused. We're vibing out here. Then we're gonna draw some cards So again, we're hoping for the reset stamp Jesse James combo so they can't really do too much. They still have all those energies, so it is going to be quite hard for us to get those energies back onto our opponent's Pokemon. And if they do draw into the correct amount of cards, they, they, they can get around it. Okay, so they did go boss's orders. We might need to get back a bird keeper. Now we have used both of our Cynthia Caitlin's. There's an extra energy. Are they going to get the first heads? Because that one's really going to matter. Because it doesn't matter how many they flip for max jet. So they got to be very careful with the amount of energies that they're playing around with. So as they struggle with something as simple as a Yellhorn card, we might be okay. But I don't want to lose our station. 
it's really one of those uh <laughs> it's probably not the greatest matchup for a deck but for the sake of it i can kind of explain everything what's going in and where it could be interesting otherwise and if this game goes particularly long it's one of those games where we're probably only going to play the one game as they play other pokemon we might be able to boss them up and galar mine them so i i'm assuming they play three copies of the glimwood tango card that seems correct maybe they play a fourth copy but the goal is probably going to be boss up the den hex and maybe just stall it or the porygon z might be something that's better in the active position you want to choose pokemon that can't necessarily attack when you bring them up into the active spot so we'll see exactly how it goes so there's their tails we got an extra turn they lost an energy now we do have the lieutenant surge we can start getting some of their energies back we just don't necessarily have anything crazy going on so let's go ahead here and go airmail first boss orders might be worthwhile so we're gonna go through all these before we decide what we want to do wondrous lab is definitely a way to take one of the care of their glimwood tangle Although them getting extra energies is probably not going to matter too, too much. Let's go airmail for the last one. I'm just going to grab the capture energy because I think that sounds worthwhile. Now at this point, I, I'm not entirely sure how I like this because we can't do too much to their hands. Like we can get them with some energies and they already have three energies on that Pokemon. So I think I'm going to try to start bossing up their Pokemon so that they can't do too much. They might not necessarily have all the fancy energies because they have wasted some resources and they don't have the free retreat because their recycles are there. So one of the biggest mistakes you can make as the Cram Ram player is attaching all your recycles to one Pokemon, especially if you're playing against control. Now there are cards that we can play, I just don't think it's worthwhile for us to play. Um, so there's a Weezing, Scoop Up Net. At least we have the Scoop Up Net if we really need to. Um, I think we're just kind of vibing. We do have the Bird Keeper. Although that is our last bird keeper, we don't want to deck ourselves out. So there's one energy. They do need uh, three energies in order to get out of the active spot. So it could just be as simple as us going boss, bring it up, boss, bring it up, boss, bring it up. Unless they play switch, they might play escape rope nowadays. They might not understand how the glim, like they might just have their glimwood to get out of the active spot. They may not understand how Galar Mine works. Um, there's a bunch of things that Control can just do, and we're still just uh, vibing out here. The more turns that we have, the better shot we have of winning this game. There's a Big Charm. Big Charm's not going to do anything. And they're going through their deck quite hard. If they do find the Glimwood Tangle, yeah. So they are going to retreat. But they are fully bench locked as well now, so that is something to note. I, I am assuming our Zation is just gonna be gone. One heads, two heads, three heads, four heads. Our opponent is very good at flipping coins apparently uh, <laughs> with their 10 energies on their active Pokemon. Okay, cool. So they're down to three prize cards. There's a Jirachi. awesome i might as well just go before i do anything i do want to go pidgeotto crushing hammer or actually boss is probably going to be huge especially if i can get another glimwood we only seen the one so far might as well grab one of those energies that sounds good as well let's go airmail there's a drillber So we are going to go, um, before we put Drillbird down, I am going to go Stellar Wish. There is a Glim, or a Galar Mine, so that's going to allow us to kind of get that out of there. There's a Galar Mine. I am going to put down a Drillbird. Not really much else that we could do. And I am going to go Boss's Orders to bring this up. I think that probably makes the most sense unless they've gone through all of their triple acceleration energies. They have gone through all their triple acceleration energies. One, two, three, four, five, um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think they only have four energies left. Um, this would cause them to get more energies to have to get them out. So I think I'm going to bring up this Pokemon unless this has two retreat. No, 
Okay. We'll bring up this, hoping that they cannot attack us. And we're going to hold on to the Crushing Hammer in case they miss somehow. So let's go ahead here and pass. I'm not going to attach the Fighting Energy until I'm ready to use either the Excadrill or the Rototiller. So Rototiller there or Rototiller there. So trying to stall our opponent with the Glimwood or the Galar Mine, hoping they do not have a Glimwood Tangle. So there's one of their energies. And again, if they retreat, they lose those energies. So as long as we're able to get off our boss or something like that, we could be okay. So they have a crazy code. There's another energy. We're starting to see the powerful colorless energies that I don't think we've seen so far. This deck has access to a lot of different energies that I could be playing. Okay, so they did not get it. Um, let's go ahead and before we do anything, let's just go airmail. I think airmail sounds really good. Let's go crushing hammers, try to take away all their energies. You could always grab a Jesse and James. I think Jesse James sounds really good. Let's see what we could do with Pidgeotto. Let's go grab a capture energy. And again, we haven't played our scoop up net, so we do have our scoop up net somewhere in the deck. We can get a Rototiller off if we find it. There is their team Yelgrunt. I don't necessarily see that gonna be too big. Um, tool Scrap are doing anything, or Chip Chip Ice Axe. Maybe just grabbing the Chip Chip Ice Axe. They don't really have tools, they have the big charm. I'm not too, too worried about that. So let's try to take away some of their energies. There's an energy. We want to take them off this Pokemon, just making sure that none of them necessarily matter. I don't care about how much damage they could do. Let's try to take off the other one. So that's not going to matter too much. Now, this is doing 120. This Pokemon has 120. I think we're probably going to vibe out the turn again. So hoping that they do not find a Glimwood Tangle or that they do not find the necessary energies to retreat. So they need four energies to retreat total. Hopefully they're just kind of like out of the energies. So there's the Drillber. That's almost fine with me. I'll evolve into the extra drill if we're able to use Rototiller. Um, because they're not playing their supporters, they probably don't have the Glimwood Tangles um, in their hand. Otherwise they probably would have played it or retreated last turn. So we'll have to see exactly what's going on there. So we're just chilling. We want to get back our Galar Mines ASAP. And maybe they only play two Glimwood Tangles. Maybe they're like, we're just really good at flipping coins. Okay, so before we go through with anything else, let's go Airmail. Reset Stamp could be really good. Uh, because now we could take away their entire hands. Let's go Airmail. Let's grab a Zacian because we're just going to rip our hand apart at this stage. Let's go airmail again. There's a scoop of net that can certainly be huge. Or actually, we can even go team Yelgrunt, um, ripping their energy back. So here's exactly how this is going to work out. We're going to go like this. We're going to go team Yelgrunt, rip that back into their deck. Now we're going to play reset stamp. So now that energy is shuffled back up. So that's what I was talking about, playing cards in the correct order. They have a three card hand. Let's go Jesse and James. And when they discard their two cards, then I'm gonna play my Weezing so they discard their third card. And then I'm gonna Chip Chip Ice Axe them. They can't do anything for the rest of the game. And this is where the game's going, to, we might see an upset win. So it takes a while to get into this position and I mean, it's not necessarily a great matchup, but our opponents, with the way that they've managed their resources, has just been worse than the way that we've managed our resources. I'm going to discard the level ball. I think that makes a lot more sense. Do we want to discard a card from their hand? Yes. Perfect. Now we're going to go Chip Chip Ice Axe. So what card do we want to put on top? Of course we're going to put the Mew. We don't want to give them a reset stamp. We don't want to give them a professor's research. And we just want to control everything that they're doing every single turn. So there's our energy. Here's our Rototiller. And let's go Rototiller. So cards that are important for us are going to be Chip Chip Ice Axe. We want to make sure that we have Galar Mine. I want to make sure that we have access to Jesse James. And I want to make sure that we have access to Bird Keeper. These are all really important cards. Everything else we could always wait until next turn. 
Do not play this deck for your player's cup keys. There's only 12 minutes. You can see that I've already gone through third. I've already gone through 12 of mine. So they're just going to pass their turn because they only have a Mew in their hands. So our goal is to try to get them into top deck mode so we can draw something. We have a Jesse James. So let's just go ahead here. Airmail first. There's a Bird Keeper. Let's go Airmail. There's a Lieutenant Surge. Maybe we want to go Lieutenant Surge. Let's go with... Pidgeotto. Is there anything that I really want to be doing with Jesse James? Do I want to, like, I can't necessarily... I'll go Bird Keeper into the Pidgeotto. Or actually, that's not going to matter. We're going to go Bird Keeper into there. So we do have access to the Chip Chip Ice Axe. Let's see what we get off with Stellar Wish. So we do have another Chip Chip Ice Axe. I'm going to grab another Bird Keeper. In this case, it might be a little bit too risky. But let's just go Chip Chip Ice Axe cards that they could put on top of their deck. I'm totally fine with them having a Porygon. At this point, there's really nothing else that I can do. I could Bird Keeper the next turn. So let's go ahead here and pass our turn. So next turn, we're still going to be able to get Jirachi, Pidgeotto, 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 and a lot of the cards that we have there. Our opponent, again, nothing in their turn. So we just have to be very careful with the amount of time that we're taking our per action per turn so that we do not time out. This deck does take a lot of time to play. Okay, so we're going to go Pidgeotto here, Crushing Hammer, Airmail, let's go Chip Chip Ice Axe so that we can always control what's going on top of their deck. Let's go Airmail here, let's get Scoop Up Net. And they're going to concede, and that's really where they know that we're in a complete lock now. And as you can see, that's what we got going on with this deck. It takes a few swift mistakes from our opponents. And that's not to say that our opponents make mistakes with that deck all the time. It's just fundamentally against that matchup. They had no way to retreat and we completely locked their hand out. Sure, they could have got a Glimwood Tangle out there, but we would have just discarded it with Jesse James eventually. So as they brought up our own Excadrill and allowed us to just use Rototiller over and over again, because we weren't finding it with Jirachi, we were able to jump back into the game to kind of see exactly how this deck works. Again, not the greatest matchup for us, not necessarily the cleanest lines of play, but we did have options available to us at that time to really show what this deck can do and kind of the locking potential. I could play that matchup a few times over and it might not have necessarily came out the same way. I could play it against other matchups and our opponent might have conceded within the first couple turns. You never know what's gonna happen on ladder, but that's exactly what this deck has to offer uh, to this metagame. So just again, a few parting notes. Do not play this for your player's cup keys. As you saw, my clock got down to basically the 12 minute and 30 second mark. That means I would have lost the game for a player's cup keys. Now, it's one thing that when I'm explaining the deck, then me just clicking through cards, this is not necessarily the deck that I'm the most comfortable with. I think that there are some players that might be able to play this deck a little bit quicker or get to the lock a little bit quicker than I did. I don't necessarily think it's worthwhile in that case. Um, and of course, you're some kind of control deck experts, and even then it's still like eh, it's kind of tough uh beyond that i mean it's one of those things where play this in best two or three as you can see we were kind of falling a little bit our start wasn't amazing um and you you sometimes need to take a loss in those games so again time is of the essence make sure that you're playing in this deck in a tournament where there's lots of time Again, don't play it in your player's cup keys because that's a tournament where there's not a lot of times and make sure you understand what this deck's doing. If you enjoyed this video or if you learned something new, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. We're on our way to 4,000 and hopefully this, help, this deck helps you out on your journey. Thank you so much everyone for watching. Have yourself a great one. Peace out. I want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's become a channel member so far. Some peeps wa love watching my videos, and I totally appreciate that, but some peeps have gone more than out of their way beyond just watching my videos and have supported me financially. So shout out to everyone who's been featured on this channel, who's going through this list of names. We actually have so many channel members that I can't fit them in a single slide, so I figured this might be the best way to get everyone appreciated and kind of showcase all of the top supporters of the Zach Lesage PTCG YouTube channel. Seriously, it means the bottom, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I, it's honestly, I'm almost at a loss for words but I, I'm so happy that you are all appreciating and loving the content and that it's hitting home and I mean I'm all, I'm up all I'm in my feels so I hope that you uh, <laughs> understand and thank you so much everyone if you want to become a channel member totally consider it um, I'll make it worth your while 
Um, and I, I totally mean that. I'll do everything I possibly can for my channel members to make it sure that it's worth their while. So thank you so much, everyone. And it, it, it's just amazing. Thank you. For everyone who's wondering on how to become a channel member, I first and foremost appreciate your consideration. You can click on any one of my videos on desktop and then you can click join. Join will give you all the opportunities about what we have going on. You can support my content. You could choose the deck list hookup where you get access to my deck list. And we have a group coaching package as well. Um, there's a lot of other things like custom emotes, early access to videos that I try to offer. So you would just click join and you'd be good and you'd be featured at the end of these videos. Thanks so much everyone. Thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel. If you haven't already, it'd mean the world to me if you could subscribe to help support me as a content creator. Thanks again and have yourself a great one.